Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. The first in our television demonstrations on histological and microscopic structures concerns the cell. The cell has two major components, the nucleus and cytoplasm. You are viewing a low power view of a section of liver stained with hematoxylin and eosin, a red and blue stain. Now we'll move to a higher power and you'll see the cell detail more clearly. This is a medium power view of the liver. The liver is made up of numerous vascular channels for blood. These are called sinusoids in the liver. Those are the empty white appearing spaces. The blood cells have been washed out in preparation. The cells of the liver are in sheets, in cords, in long anastomosing cell layers. Now, we'll look at the cell detail of this section in high power. The cell is bounded by the cell membrane. In this case, the cytoplasmic materials have clumped against the cell membrane giving it a distinct outline. These are cuboidal shaped cells. The cytoplasmic material appears pebbled and variegated, and it stains pink. In the middle of these cells is the nucleus. There's usually one nucleus per cell. In some cases in the liver, there'll be two nucleuses or more per cell. Now let's look at the outline of the nucleus, the so-called nuclear membrane. The nucleus is stained blue. In the middle of, of this nucleus is a prominent dark blue dot, the nucleolus. The nucleus is the information center of the cell. It's bounded by a bilaminar nuclear membrane. The information in the nucleus is stored in chromosomes. Another term is genes. The chemical composition of chromosomes is DNA or desoxyribonucleic acid. That's the actual information storage in that molecule. Information leaving the nucleus to the cytoplasm usually goes by way of the nucleolus. Now we'll look at electron micrograph picture of a cell and point out the components of the nucleus. In the lower right-hand corner, we have the cell membrane. There's actually two cells here. That's running from the lower left across the field, pointed out here. Now if we look at the nucleus of this cell, we'll see the components of it. Now the nuclear membrane surrounds the nucleus, I mean surrounds the nucleus, and we'll point to that. It's a two-layered membrane. It has pores in it where information can come from the nucleus out to the cytoplasm. The dark material in the nucleus is the chromosomes. Many times chromosomes will clump to the outside of the nuclear membrane. And right in the middle is a very prominent nucleolus. It's particularly prominent in protein secreting cells. Let's look at a higher power of another cell and its nucleus. We'll outline the nuclear membrane, a two layered structure. There's evidence of some pores in this membrane. There's some clumping of chromatin material, the chromosomes or the genes, to the outside of the nuclear membrane. There's not a nucleolus shown in this nucleus. 
aside from the nucleus, the rest of the cell is the cytoplasm. The components of the cytoplasm are organelles and inclusions. We'll cover the organelles first. Most of these are comprised of cell membranes. The endoplasmic reticulum comes in two versions, both smooth and rough. Smooth endoplasmic reticulum is found in lipid-secreting cells, rough endoplasmic reticulum in protein-secreting cells. Mitochondria are the energy source of the cell. The Golgi apparatus, another membrane structure, lysosomes, and centrioles. We'll cover these organelles of the cell now individually. In a protein-secreting cell, we have large amounts of rough endoplasmic reticulum. These are double-layered membrane structures studded with ribosomes. The ribosomes are made of ribonucleic acid and protein. These are on the outside surface of the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Now, at a higher view, we'll notice the ribosomes. These are 150 angstrom in diameter, and the membranes comprising the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Protein is synthesized in concert with the ribosomes and then secreted on the middle or the cisterna of the endoplasmic reticulum. Protein substances synthesized by the rough endoplasmic reticulum are transported to the Golgi apparatus. Here the proteins are condensed, they're packaged up into granules, and also many times carbohydrates are added to the proteins. The Golgi apparatus is composed of vesicles and lamellar membrane structures. It's usually located in a position close to the nucleus. Now in this electron micrograph, there's a nucleus in the upper left-hand corner, and we can point to the nuclear membrane. Now the Golgi apparatus is this vesicle and lamellar appearance of membranes. This is where the protein is packaged and condensed and packaged up into secretion granules. Now in another picture of a protein secreting cell, we see the very condensed protein secretion granules. Those are the dark, round appearing objects throughout the field. The nucleus is over to the left hand corner. Now let's look for the smooth appearance of the Golgi apparatus in this cell. So for review, the material is synthesized by the rough endoplasmic reticulum, which is throughout the whole cell, the cytoplasm, transported to the Golgi, and then packaged up into the very prominent secretion granules. Another organelle is the mitochondria. This is the energy source of the cell. It is a membrane structure also with prominent cristae that run through the center of the mitochondria. Many cells have distinct morphology for each mitochondria. Its function is energy production. It synthesizes ATP, which is a high energy phosphate bond named adenosine triphosphate. There are actually thousands of mitochondria per cell. Here in a higher power, we have an individual mitochondria that has an outer membrane bounding it. 
And then there are individual Christi that run throughout the mitochondria. It's on these Christi is the location of the enzymes that produce ATP, the energy source of the cell. Lysosomes contain the acid hydrolases that are found in the cell. These function by ingesting foreign material, bacteria, foreign proteins, and break them down. They're containers of degradative enzymes, acid hydrolases. In this electron micrograph, there are two prominent lysosomes. Here we have one. You can even see the ingested material in that lysosome. Over to the left is another very prominent lysosome. These are bags or containers of enzymes, acid hydrolases. The last organelle to be covered is the centriole. In this picture, we have the nucleus to the left and a prominent centriole found in the cytoplasm adjacent to the nucleus. Another view of the centriole, a double membrane structure is shown here. It functions in cell division and also is the origin of cilia in a ciliated cell. This is the centriole. That's the organelles of the cytoplasm of the cell. There are also inclusions. So we have organelles and inclusions in the cytoplasm of the cell. Inclusions are more of the non-functioning storage or non-viable substances found in the cytoplasm. This would include secretory granules, vacuoles, pigment, glycogen storage, and fat vacuoles. Returning to the light microscope picture of the liver, you see the palisading and nastomosing cords of liver cells. We've chosen this cell to demonstrate at the light microscope picture some of the organelles, or excuse me, the inclusions that are found in the liver. The liver is a very heterogeneous type of cell, able to store and manufacture carbohydrates, lipids, and protein. In a view of the liver stained for fat, we notice the fine particulate like black staining lipid material. This is a specific stain for fat vacuoles, one of the inclusions of this particular liver cell. In another view, we've seen, stained this section for glycogen. Glycogen is an inclusion that's stored in very fine particulate-like deposits. It's actually a polymer of glucose. So this is a sugar storage form in the liver cell. These have been two examples of the inclusions found at the light microscope level. Mitosis is a process of cell division. When a cell divides, the chromosomes or the genes in the nucleus must duplicate themselves, and then half goes to one cell and half to the other daughter cell. The stages of mitosis are interphase, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. We'll show you demonstrations of each of these phases in the process of mitosis. Now viewed in the microscope are several cells. In prophase, these chromosomes duplicate and become very obvious in the stain preparation. These are the darkened, duplicating chromosomes. Recall that the chromosomes are made up of desoxyribonucleic acid. 
The next stage after prophase is metaphase. And in metaphase, the chromosomes align themselves on a plate. It's called the equatorial plate or the metaphasic plate. These are the chromosomes aligned in the linear array. This cell is in the stage of metaphase. The next step is the division of these chromosomes into pairs. One pair will go to one cell, the other set to the other. This is the stage of anaphase. Here's another view of a cell in anaphase. Notice the separation of the chromosomes. The next phase is telophase. Here we see the pinching off of the cytoplasm to make two cells. There will be reformation of the cell membrane and then reformation of the nuclear membrane. This is telophase. Interphase is a resting stage. So most of the cells are in interphase. In summary, mitosis is characterized by five phases. Interphase, which is a resting phase. Prophase, where we have a darkening and duplication of the chromosomes. Metaphase is where the chromosomes line up on an equatorial plate. Anaphase, the division of the chromosomes. And telophase, the final phase, the budding off into two daughter cells. That concludes our discussion of mitosis. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.